In this lecture, we are going to talk about the direct effects of nervous stimuli on coronary vasculature. What are the direct effects of nervous stimulation on coronary vasculature? As we are discussing the coronary circulation and in our last lecture, we discussed the control of coronary blood flow or the control of blood flow to the heart muscles. We discussed in detail that there are two main mechanisms, the local factors and the nervous factors or the nervous control, which basically control the amount of blood or the coronary blood that will, that will be going to the heart muscles or the cardiac muscles. Now, in the local factors, we discussed that the most important factors are the decrease in oxygen, adenosine, potassium ion, hydrogen ion, lactic acid. And similarly, we also discussed the nervous control and we discussed that sympathetic stimulation plays an important role in increasing or decreasing the coronary blood flow. Now, today we are going to uh, focus and discuss in detail the direct effects of nervous stimulation on coronary vasculature. Because in the last lecture, we also discussed some indirect effects of nervous uh, stimulation on the coronary blood flow. Now suppose for example, this is the heart. This is the heart and it is being innervated with the sympathetic nerves, sympathetic nerves and the parasympathetic nerves. Now we are going to discuss the direct effects. So basically the, the neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter that is released from the sympathetic nerves, from the sympathetics are epinephrine and norepinephrine. And the neurotransmitter from the parasympathetic nerves, this parasympathetic nerve is basically coming uh, from the vagus. These fibers are coming in the vagus nerve. Vagus or vagus or vagus, whatever you call it. And the neurotransmitter in the parasympathetic nerves is the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. Now, normally, the effects of the epinephrine or norepinephrine, which are the main neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system, their main effects are increase in vasoconstriction. Whenever a blood vessel, whenever a blood vessel is stimulated with epinephrine, norepinephrine, it gets constricted. That is something which we have discussed again and again. But there is an important factor. These neurotransmitters, these neurotransmitters, they will not act directly on the blood vessel. Instead, there are some receptors for the these uh, transmitters. And the most important receptors are the alpha receptor and the beta receptor. Now, if the nor epinephrine it acts on the alpha receptors if it acts on the alpha receptors it will cause constriction it will cause constriction of the vessel so the direct effects the direct effect of the sympathetic stimulation on the blood vessel or the coronary blood vessel this is suppose for example the coronary blood vessel so if there are alpha receptors if there are alpha receptors here it will lead to constriction the blood vessel will decrease its caliber the size of the blood vessel will decrease and the blood flow to the vessel will also decrease but if there are beta receptor if there are beta receptor then the action of norepinephrine or epinephrine on beta receptor will lead to dilation of the blood vessel it will lead to dilation or increase in size of of the blood vessels or increase in width of the blood vessel and more blood flow will occur to this vessel 
normally in the heart there are both alpha receptor and beta receptor in the heart there are both alpha receptor and beta beta receptors as we discussed previously that the coronary blood flow the coronary blood flow it is such that the arteries which are present on the outside portion or the outer portion of the heart on the outer portion of the heart they are epicardial they are epicardial and then branches go from these epicardial vessels in the muscle and they are intramuscular intramuscular branches and finally we have the subendocardial coronary vessels the coronary circulation is such that the some of the blood vessels are present on the outer portion of the heart and it is taking the blood and then branches go from the these are the epicardial coronary vessels blood from the epicardial vessels go into the intramuscular branches and these intramuscular branches they basically supply blood to the muscles of the heart they are intramuscular finally below the endocardium that is something which we have discussed in detail and for which you should watch our uh, previous lectures in which we have discussed in detail but here i am just summarizing it so that you can understand the 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 presence of different receptors on different portions of the uh, coronary vessels now the coronary vessels are epicardial intra uh, muscular and sub endocardial the alpha receptors alpha receptors are more prominent or their number or their proportion is more on the epicardial coronary vessels and the beta receptors the beta receptors they are more on here intramuscular portion of the coronary vessels so when this direct effect when we were talking about the direct effects of nervous stimuli on coronary vasculation so the direct effect of sympathetic the direct effect of sympathetic nerves which will secrete the epinephrine and norepinephrine it will include the constriction it will include the constriction of the epicardial vessels because of the alpha receptors and it will lead to dilation it will lead to dilation of the intramuscular vessels it will lead to dilation so because the constriction most of the time most of the time the epinephrine norepinephrine will lead to vasoconstriction especially in the peripheral uh, portion of the human body or in the peripheries but this action this constriction or dilation is also dependent on the presence of receptors alpha or beta receptors both the receptors are present in the heart alpha are more present in the epicardial vessels beta are more present or more abundance in the uh, intramuscular portions so in the sympathetic stimulation both vasoconstriction and vasodilation of the coronary vessels can occur both but most of the time constriction occurs most of the time constriction occurs due to the effects of sympathetic stimulation but it will not lead to decrease in blood flow it will not cause a decrease in the coronary blood flow it will not cause decrease in coronary blood flow because because apart from the direct effects apart from the direct effects the sympathetic stimulation also has some indirect effects the indirect effects of the sympathetic stimulation are increase in the heart rate increase in the heart rate the heart will start contracting more increase in power or force of contraction of the heart increase in the metabolism of the heart muscles so these factors the increase in the heart rate increase in the force or power of contraction of the heart increase in metabolism of the heart muscles these factors will basically lead to the formation of local vasodilator local vasodilators or production of local factors which will cause vasodilation so the direct effects of sympathetic nerves on the coronary blood flow basically could be 
vasoconstriction, a decrease in the size of the blood vessel or vasodilation depending upon the type of receptors but most of the time the sympathetics will cause vasoconstriction if there is only the direct effects but we have discussed previously and we will discuss again that the sympathetics will the sympathetic innervation the sympathetic innervation will also cause some indirect effects it will also stimulate the heart due to which there will be production of some local vasodilator factors and those vasodilator factors will ultimately lead to vasodilation of the coronary vessels but the focus was basically on the direct effects so these are the direct effects of sympathetics sympathetics now the heart also has some parasympathetic innervation the heart also has some parasympathetic innervation and the 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 neurotransmitter secreted from the parasympathetics is acetylcholine acetylcholine now the actions of acetylcholine on the blood vessel the action of parasympathetic nerves which is secreting acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter the action of the acetylcholine on the blood vessels include dilation whenever there is secretion of acetylcholine it will lead to vasodilation the the blood vessel will get dilated and the the actions of acetylcholine on the heart include decrease in the heart rate decrease in the power or force of contraction of the heart and decrease in the metabolism of the heart so the actions of the acetylcholine or the actions of parasympathetic nerve stimulation are opposite these are opposite to these action which are basically caused by sympathetic stimulation ultimately these actions these direct actions these direct actions are uh, counteracted these are count counteracted by the indirect actions so if acetylcholine or uh, parasympathetic stimulation leads to vasodilation then decrease uh, the blood flow to the vessel may increase the blood flow may increase due to vasodilation but ultimately this uh, acetylcholine is also decreasing the heart rate and decreasing the power of the heart and decreasing the metabolism of the heart so the demand for the the demand for the nutrients will decrease and the production of local factors will decrease so there will be no much uh, change similarly the the similarly the stimulation of uh, sympathetic nerves will lead to uh, production of neurotransmitter epinephrine and norepinephrine which will directly lead to vasoconstriction which will lead to directly lead to vasoconstriction but the indirect effects will include increase in heart rate increase in power or force of contraction of the heart and increase in metabolism which will counteract these actions now these innervations the sympathetic stimulation and the parasympathetic stimulation it will not occur together it will occur in different conditions for example the fight fright and flight fight fright or uh, flight response which gets stimulated in exercise as well it will lead to stimulation of the sympathetic nerves so here the blood flow through the coronary circulation will only increase because the demand is more so the uh, circulation will uh, increase and the blood flow to the blood flow through these vessels the coronary vessels with will increase but when a person is in the rest and digest condition rest and digest lying comfortably in the bedroom and watching television then in these conditions the parasympathetics are more active they will decrease the heart rate that will decrease the metabolism and that will decrease the uh, coronary blood flow so that's all about the direct effects of nervous stimuli on coronary vasculation and uh, along with that we have also discussed some indirect effects as well thanks a lot for watching the video